Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Supply Chain Podcast. My name is Tom Raftery with SAP. And with me on the show today, I have my special guest, Dominic. Dominic, would you like to reintroduce yourself? Welcome back to the show. Yeah, perfect, Tom. Thanks so much for having me back. Uh, Dominic Metzger, I'm part of SAP's product engineering organization, and I run product management for our manufacturing and industrial IoT solutions. Tremendous. And Dominic, we are inviting you back on the show because you wrote a blog post not so long ago where you referred to something called smart sensing. And it was the first time first time I'd come across that term in that context. And I'm sure many people listening to the podcast uh, may not have read the blog. And maybe you could explain to us what is smart sensing? Yeah, absolutely. So smart sensing really to us is a uh, a way to automate and to really improve business processes, both in uh, logistics, in manufacturing, but also in, let me call, supply chain management overall. And very specifically, it is all about using this wealth of uh, information that we gain, for example, from sensors, uh, from RFID tags, from QR codes or potentially even from images, from cameras, to identify supply chain objects, think pallets, trucks, uh, boxes, uh, goods that we are moving, and use this this information, use this these sensor values to take an automated business decision. Uh, I will get much, much more specific, but just to give you already one example, uh, by, for example, equipping Uh, pallets with RFID sensors or uh, with sensors that can even measure the condition of uh, uh, whatever we are tracking, right? Temperature, humidity, whatever it is we want to track. Um, This allows us to not only find the position uh, of whatever we are tracking, but also get a lot of contextual information. Uh, And the end goal of smart sensing, as I mentioned, is then to really use this information to automate uh, a business process. Okay, because we have access to many, many sensors increasingly nowadays, but what you're, the difference here you're saying is that rather than seeing an alert come up and manually make a, a, a decision to act on something, that process is being automated. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is the critical part um, that we go all the way to steering business transactions. So exactly what you mentioned, Tom, rather than um, me as a user in a warehouse or uh, tracking a delivery for my customer, getting an alert uh, popped up, why why not automatically, if there's something wrong, for example, uh, with my product on the road uh, or um, with the pallet that is uh, uh, driven through the warehouse, why not automatically post transaction? So create a goods issue automatically, a goods receipt. Why not automatically, um, uh, let's say, uh, create a new uh, outbound delivery because I know the first one had an incident, the temperature went too high, um, my product is actually uh, seeing a problem, cannot be delivered any longer. Um, So I automatically trigger uh, a new delivery, maybe even uh, an automated notification to my end customer that there is a challenge uh, during the delivery. Okay, and I mean, uh, what else is new about this? Is is this something that can scale more, or what other differences are, are, are does this bring to the table? Yeah, good question. Because the technology itself, or the idea, uh, is not that new. Uh, we also refer to it as automatic identification, auto ID. So pretty much with the invention of sensor technology. Um, and RFID reader gates, for example, this became a capability. Now, what really has changed, in my opinion, are two aspects. First of all, uh, what I would um, summarize really under the umbrella of uh, total cost of operations. Um, Not only have sensors of the last decades become significantly cheaper, but also the um, IT, so the software capabilities, have become much, much more uh, scalable. why is that? Because um, in a world of on-premise computing, it basically means that every single warehouse where you want to introduce this technology to in order to automate a goods issue, goods receipt process, for example, 
uh, you need to install software, right? You need to um, run applications on premise. You need to configure them. You need to run projects. You need to um, provide all the contextual rules to interpret these events. But now, with the capabilities of cloud and edge computing, we are suddenly able across um, 10, 20, 100 factories, warehouses, distribution centers, to introduce one smart sensing cloud, which contains all the intelligence, right? Because at the end, it's not so exciting any longer being able to capture sensor readings, right? That is the technology that has always been there. But the intelligence, the rules, or the, um, yeah, really the, uh, let's say, uh, the intelligence that interprets these events, that interprets the data and says, all right, if it is a certain threshold that is reached for a certain product on a certain route, that is the point in time where I need to trigger transaction A, B, or C. That is now completely supported in, uh, in our smart sensing cloud. And in order to ensure that still we have the availability in, uh, in the warehouses, in the factories of this world, we combine it with edge computing. So we are now able to have a very, very lean footprint that is necessary um, still in the factories or distribution centers, but uh, significantly um, cheaper and more lean compared to a full-blown on-premise implementation. So I would say this is the first big aspect and that immediately ties with the second scalability also just from a performance perspective. So it is now with the help of cloud and edge computing, uh, we have a significantly more robust um, architecture and uh, scalability, which means we can just process thousands and thousands of events and we see significantly lower latencies or um, just a higher performance. Tremendous, tremendous. Are there any um, examples you can talk to, any kind of use cases that you can refer to? Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Three come to mind. The first one really happens um, in most of our customers' warehouses, which is classic um, inbound and outbound movements. This could be um, very simply when you have um, a distribution center, but this could also be in a, in a production context. Uh, you have a truck arriving, you're unloading uh, a container, a truck, whatever it is, and you equip your uh, premises. As we discussed, it could be an RFID reader gate. Um, you could work with ultra wideband technologies. It could even be, as we mentioned, there are camera technologies available that also have basically video recognition features, yeah? um, which can give us indications on um, the goods, their position, and their condition. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's all for the purpose of automating um, warehouse logistics processes that we can very uh, much more efficiently um, post um, goods received, goods issue without anyone needing to get out a handheld and scanning codes or typing in uh, numbers on a um, on a handheld device in a warehouse, for example. Yeah. The second use case um, is more in a production context um, uh, uh, in, in Kanban scenarios. So Kanban is a very, very well-established scenario, which means nothing else. It's a uh, pull principle where um, if I'm, let's say, a production operator and I'm at a an assembly station, but I need certain boxes, certain parts, um, that automatically, based on, um, let's say, equipping a Kanban box, right, which contains the parts that I'm using to assemble my product, that this box automatically sends a signal that it's empty, almost empty, near empty. We can do this very, very simply with smart shelves or with um, basically weight tracking, right? We know how heavy mm -hmm. the box still is. And this automatically sends a signal to my warehouse system, which uh, triggers, for example, a warehouse task, a warehouse order to send replenishment to me. And this could happen in various facets but it's just another way to further automate this Kanban process. Uh, and the third, what I find is actually one of the most exciting cases is when it comes to measuring also the condition uh, of whatever I'm transporting or whatever I'm, um, I'm, I'm tracking. So this could be a classic cold chain scenario, right? So I have my a container on the road with perishables, with uh, pharmaceutical products, that cannot uh, go above or beyond a certain temperature. Uh, so also here I can uh, equip smart sensing technology um, 
to measure this, but even other conditions could be tracked, right? We have customers, for example, uh, in their production facilities, um, they are um, assembling or uh, producing um, parts which are highly sensitive to certain conditions, for example, shocks, right? Um, because there's a chance that um, the uh, there will later on in the finished product, there will be a damage if one of the parts, right, has been exposed to too much of a shock during production. It fell down or uh, a forklift um, uh, had a little, uh, a little incident, right? Or even, um, again, temperature or other conditions. So preventing these, uh, let me say, downstream quality issues, also this can handle with smart sensing that these uh, sensitive parts, let's call it, are equipped with sensors and we can, during the production process, track them um, and their conditions thoroughly uh, to achieve end-to-end -end, uh, parts traceability. Superb, superb. The last time, Dominic, you were on this podcast, you were talking about Industry 4.0 and, you know, we had Niels on as well, talking about the whole ecosystem around Industry 4.0. How does how does something like smart sensing fit into that? What's the kind of big picture for it there? Mm. Yeah, very good point. Um, so the Industry 4.0 strategy that we follow um, really, let me say, builds on multiple pillars and um, a lot of the scenarios that we discussed happens in a factory, right? Happens in a warehouse. So it really addresses our intelligent factory, our intelligent logistics um, strategy in the context of Industry 4.0. And I personally see it as a technology enabler, right? The technology um, that we are talking about here is really, as we mentioned, a highly scalable possibility to leverage this wealth of data, sensor data, um, camera data, um, but again, most exciting to enrich it uh, with rules, with intelligence to drive business processes in a factory, right? So if I go back to my Kanban scenario or even the um, handling unit condition scenario that I described where we want to know, uh, did anything go wrong with a sub part that I'm assembling? Um, this really feeds into um, improving productivity, right? Into improving the quality of the products that I'm creating and is therefore an integral part of a intelligent factory and intelligent plant. Okay, okay, great. And where to from here? Where, where, where does the kind of smart sensing go after this? Mm -hmm. um, so we have actually launched this capability uh, mid this year. We are working at the moment with first co-innovation customers in rolling this out um, across multiple factories and distribution centers. Uh, for, for example, in the uh, automotive supplier segment. Um, so uh, we will definitely be sharing some news uh, in the future about um, some very first exciting customer success stories. In the meantime, what I recommend is to take a peek um, onto our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be sharing the link um, where you can find a more detailed um, demo how such a scenario, for example, a Kanban scenario or a goods receipt scenario looks like how we leverage these rules, these actions, this intelligence that I talked about. Um, but also, um, why not visit our industry for now hubs? Because that's really a perfect uh, place to interact with us and our teams and talk about what um, the major challenges are of, of our customers, of our listeners, so that we can go into a dialogue of um, can we support uh, the requirements that they see um, with smart sensing. Superb, superb. Dominic, we're coming towards the end of the podcast now. Is there any question I've not asked you that you wish I had, or is there any topic we've not covered off that you think it's important for people to be aware of? The only thing that comes to mind, since you also mentioned uh, our colleague Niels, is the ecosystem. So um, obviously, smart sensing is um, a really great ecosystem play because it's um, an interplay between the sensor technology, so your actual tags and devices, um, but also with, let's say, the applications that we provide, uh, the smart sensing infrastructure, the cloud computing capabilities, the edge devices, edge gateways that at the end connect with the sensors. And what we have launched here is an initiative by the name of Industrial Internet of Things in X days, 
um, which is really a partner initiative, and we called it in X days because um, we are um, the goal of this initiative is to really have a turnkey solution together with selected hardware partners that can um, really provide seamlessly this end-to-end -end landscape, the sensors and devices, the gateways, the edge devices, and then of course from SAP, um, the applications and um, cloud and edge computing capabilities. Uh, so therefore, industrial IoT in X days, smart sensing is a big part of it. And um, we will be keen to share more uh, who those partners are, but I can already give a little hint that they are leaders in um, smart sensing technology. So yes, uh, very exciting news to come. Superb, and it's X days, not X months or years. So <laughs> <laughs> not even X weeks, exactly. That's the goal. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous. Dominic, if people want to know more about yourself or smart sensing or any of the things we talked about today, where would you have me direct them? Uh, definitely pay a visit to my LinkedIn profile. Um, feel free to shoot me a message. Um, other than this, I would love to uh, work with our customers, maybe in a visit uh, in our industry for our know hubs. Tremendous. Dominic, that's been great. Thanks a million for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Tom.